Hi everyone, I'm going to take a few minutes to walk you through the mole carnival activity that you can find on CK12. So if you open up your activity, the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on this link right here that says mole carnival. That link will take you to the mole carnival interactive that's provided through CK12. And I'm doing this with you because we haven't done very many of these interactives. And so I wanted to show you how to best utilize this resource that you have. And you'll also notice that CK12 has many other interactives. So if I don't assign one in the future, you can always feel free to walk through these interactives to help you have a deeper understanding of the material that we're covering. So the main question here is how many atoms are in a gold ring, a grain of sand or the human body? You see, these questions are really important because scientists need to know how many or how much of some substance might be needed to react fully with another substance. And so how do scientists measure that? Atoms are super tiny. So how do we make those super tiny things more measurable? The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on the play button. When you click on the play button, the interactive is going to ask you a series of questions and walk you through some information. So you see it's going to zoom in here on this really tiny piece of lead and it's going to ask you questions about the piece of lead. Now, as it's walking you through these questions, what you're going to do is you're going to answer these questions right here. So these are going to be your introduction questions. They're kind of like a pre-lab. How many atoms are in one piece of lead from a pencil? And then how many zeros are there in this number? So I want you to actually count those zeros. And you'll notice it's obviously going to be a lot of zeros. So it kind of gives you the reason for our need for something like a mole. Now, when you are finished with that portion, you are going to hit this arrow over here on the right of your screen, and that's going to take you to the simulation. And what you'll notice is that this simulation is going to be different for different students. So if you were to compare your simulation with somebody else's simulation, you're going to have some different things that you're measuring, but everybody is going to have access to this boy. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be clicking on these blue dots, and that's what it says in the instructions right here. If you scroll down, it says click on the blinking blue circles to answer the questions below. Be sure to use the mole map when necessary. So let me show you what that is. When I click on the boy, that's going to be my first one. It says each time the boy breathes, he exhales 0.5012 liters of gas. How many moles of gas does he exhale? So if I click on the mole map here, the mole map is going to give me ideas of what conversion factors do I need. These are your conversion factors right here, and these are the calculations that you might need. So here, what am I being asked? I'm being asked how many moles. So I'm going to moles, and it says from exhaling 0.5012 liters. Always find the number in the problem and start from there. That's usually what you're what your starting point is. So I'm starting at liters of gas. Liters is volume and I'm going to moles. So I'm going to use this conversion factor. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here my 0 0.5012. And you'll notice I've already done this calculation on this screen before. Now I'm going to then change that to liters. So the first thing I think is liters of air. Sure, because it's liters of air. You're breathing out and breathing in air, right? So if I move this, okay, I see my 22.41 liters, and I move that there. Now notice I get some kind of error screen. What that means is I've probably inputted something wrong. Now look at the question. It says liters of gas. Do my units say liters of gas? They don't. They say liters of air. So I'm going to actually change this, and you'll see if you scroll down, Oy, liters of gas. And I made that mistake the first time that I did that. So learn from my mistakes. Now, I'm going to move this conversion factor over here. And I know that's right. And I can tell it's right when it, it lights up green. You can also look at that and say, okay, I've got liters of gas on top here, liters of gas on the bottom. 
I know they're going to cancel because they're on opposite sides of the dividing line. So that's going to give me the correct answer. So when I go back to my worksheet, it says, which conversion factor did you need to use? This right here is the conversion factor that I needed to use. The next question is, show all of your work and how you solved the problem. So then I'm going to copy down all of this information right here, okay? And then I'm going to go to my next set of questions. And it says, click on a different item. What is the question being asked? How many conversion factors did you need to use? So in some of these, you're going to need to use two. I'm going to go back to the carnival and maybe I wanna click on this unicycle right here, okay? So the unicycle, it says the unicycle tire contains 5.33 times 10 to the 23 molecules of nitrogen gas. If all the gas was released from the tire, how many liters of gas at STP would escape? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my given value right here, okay, which is 5.33 times 10 to the 23 molecules, and then I'm going to go from there. I could even use my mole map for what I need to do first. So I have molecules, that's my particles, and I want to go to liters of gas. Well, I can't go from particles to liters because there's no arrow there. So I need to go from particles to moles and then from moles to liters. So how many conversion factors do I need? I'm going to use two of them. And then I'm going to type everything in that I need. My 5.33 times 10 to the 23 is what I'm going to type in right here. And then I'm going to change my units to molecules and draw it from there, okay? And that's what you're going to end up doing for all of this activity. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six different conversion activities and walk, really walk through this. Then for your lab extension, I've given you four more questions that I would like for you to answer. And those questions build on what you're learning in this activity and what they're actually going to do is they're going to prepare you for the next lab activity that we're going to do. And as always, if you have questions, email me, talk to me in class, do what you need to do, okay? Good luck.